MESA stands for Math, Engineering, Science, and Achievement. And uh, we're teaming up with Paul and Frank out of Missouri, um, and they, they're called the RC Foam Fighters. Three years ago, we decided to create a curriculum um, that combined what we do for MESA and with what kind of what they do for RC Foam Fighters into one we call ourselves the MESA RC Foam Fighters. Well, MESA presents a challenge, and it's a great place to go after a hard day of school, especially on a Monday. It's just a great accomplishment to be in here. In the state of Colorado, there's the, uh, there's the Colorado MESA program, and schools can actually apply for this and, and be a part of it. As far as schools outside of Colorado, um, I'm sure there wouldn't be any problem with calling yourself a MESA group that deals with math, engineering, science, or you can call yourself a STEM group, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, and then throwing on whatever you guys want to call yourselves. But yeah, anybody can have a, a MESA group, or in, in some aspects, it's the same type of curriculum um, at their school. It's hands-on, and it's, it's not easy to do. It's a challenge. And being with all your friends that are in Mesa, that's it's it's really fun. How do you start up an after-school club um, for RCs? Well, one, you gotta have everything in place. You gotta be in communication with your admin, you know, your principals, and, and make sure that um, you know everything is, is set for, for for safety. You know, make sure that you have membership of AMA. Um, and uh, you know, so you're covered just in case some stuff might happen. Um, but as far as that, you know, having the safety set, you know, the big, big thing is safety because you are dealing with the youngsters and um, making sure that you as an individual, the, the teacher or the student, whoever you have is, that's going to be guiding you, knows what he's doing with RC stuff. Um, it can be very dangerous. And um, I think once you have that and you kind of have the curriculum set, then you can, you know, start recruiting and get you guys in there to to, uh, to build a program. I, I would say start off with maybe five kids who are interested in the hobby um, and then just kind of build from there just because you can learn from the mistakes with those five kids and um, you know, build to where you can handle up to what we have now, which is 25, 30 kids. This is the design room. You can see all the computers. So we can research what planes we're doing and everything. Alright, so let's go over to the Mesa room. Alright, so this is our Mesa room. This is where we keep all our planes. There's the Viking and there's some of the other planes. These are all the drawers where we keep all our stuff. The motors and the ser servos. Basically all our stuff we need for our planes. We got our foam boards up here. We just got tons of planes in here. We got all the Viking equipment. All right, so let's go to the room where we make everything. All right, so everything we make, usually we make in here. We got all the plugs for the glue guns. We got all our equipment is in the back. So all of our, everything you see in here, see on the web, we, is made in here. Uh, it's really fun. It's a challenge. It's I like building stuff, so it's kind of a hobby thing and uh, it's just really fun. It's nice being with your friends, and it just is a really cool accomplishment to build a mini airplane. <laughs> How is our program funded? Well, the big one is students pay some fees. Um, it's just the small fees, and that kind of helps with you know additional costs with glue guns and glue slugs and foam board and stuff like that. Um, you know, but one of the biggest things that we could do was, was to actually go out and get uh, sponsorships. You know, and, and Paul and Frank with RC Foam Fighters definitely help us out with. You know, providing us with motors and um, providing us with their plans that they sell to their their group, and um, you know, helping us out in any way that they can. You know, we also have Hobby Town USA, who is our local Hobby Town store, who's really 
really into helping us out and they usually pay for all of our construction costs. So they buy us like 100 foam boards for the year. We get propellers, carbon fiber rods, you know, uh, push rods, control horns, everything, you name it. All construction costs are coming from them. So um, the other one that we use for funding is, is YouTube. Um, YouTube's been a big part of, of helping us out, you know, keeping us afloat. People donating to us is, is, is huge. Um, without donations, it'd be really hard for us to, to, uh, you know, move forward as a program. And then, as well as you know, to help us kind of get money here and there, we make our own plans, and those plans um, help support us with you know buying some batteries and, and buying you know ESC, some electronic stuff uh, that we need to replace every year. So uh, that's how we fund our program. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun, fly a bunch, and learn about aviation, the great planes. Can this program grow to other locations? For sure. As long as that location has someone who knows about RC stuff, yeah, I think it can definitely grow to, to uh, other places. Question about our Viking project. Um, what radio do we use? We use a, a DX6, um, 2.4 gigahertz, and we work off of the, a UAV or uh, FPV system that's powered at, I think it's 1500 um, milliamps per hour. Um, uh, or 1500, I can't remember what, what exactly what the specs are, but it's one of the more powerful systems you can get, um, and it seems to be working really well with our spectrum setup. I like the fact that it's easy to stay on task, and it's really fun to be building airplanes. When I first saw, when I first heard about it, I was thinking, are we really building remote control planes? I thought those costed a ton, and the ability to do that is just amazing. How durable is the Viking? Well. I think if you've been sticking with us, we've crashed that thing a bunch of times, and uh, it, it seems to be holding up. That it's made out of EPP foam, and we got got it from Unicorn Wings, and those guys, you know, they gave us a fantastic product. That thing just is indestructible. Um, so you've got that fiberglass weave on top of it, and we taped it up with that you know, that sealing tape, and that thing is just solid as rock, and um, it's been a very very um, positive platform for us to use to, to test out our systems. I like Mesa because I just finished, finished my first plane and so I kind of got the gist of it. So I'm going to start designing the J-20, which is the Chinese fighter. You know, what's the next steps for our Mesa group? Well, I think every year brings a different challenge, you know, I mean, you get a whole new group of kids and, you know, so you get some of the kids who stay around, but for the most part, you know, each group brings a different, you know, different aspect to the hobby. Um, or element to the hobby. You know, you, the first year was mainly just kind of getting used to it, and then the second, you know, our first official season was the kids were just really into flying, doing dog fights, and, and really learning how to fly. Um, whereas this year, the kids aren't really into flying, they're just more into the creation part of it, and building, so we got more more creative planes this time around. So, um, it, it's definitely uh, it's definitely cool to see the two different groups and how they, how they function. And then, you know, season three, who knows what they're going to bring. You know, one of the questions is, are we going to get the, uh, the Heelys and, and the helicopters and stuff? And maybe that's something that they'd like to get into, you know. This hobby is, is endless to what we can create. And um, it'll be interesting to see what, you know, what season three kids have to offer. So here we got Cody working on the, uh, the MX-1 Wolverine canopy. So why do you like Mesa, man? Basically just flying, learning more about aviation, and just having fun. Cool. That's, you know, in a nutshell, that's what Mesa is all about. You know, having an opportunity for kids to, to do something else, you know, to apply their math and science, what they're learning in the classroom, is something that, you know, normally they wouldn't get their hands on. And our group allows that to happen. And, um, you know, I, I think the kids benefit a lot from it. And uh, if it wasn't for, you know, YouTube and all of our viewers, you know, there's no way that we'd be doing what we're doing right now. And I'd like to thank everyone for donating, all of our sponsorships for donating. Um, and keeping us sustainable you know, for the past two seasons. You know, with what we got, I think we're going to be sustainable for the next couple of years. For the next, you know, as long as I still enjoy it and the kids still enjoy it, we'll just be flying RC planes and creating RC planes for years to come.